Uh, not only is he not going to win because I've read the book, but because I know in whom I believe and I know he's going to complete the work that he started in me. And one day I'm going to see him face to face. His name's Jesus, not the devil. Amen. But uh, I worked on a sermon last night, and for the third time in my ministry, God made me preach something different. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I finished this sermon in the car on the way to church. So whoever this is for, maybe it's be for me. If it is, that's fine. It's going to do me a lot of good to say it this morning. But it might be for you. So if you've got your Bibles, turn to 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. When you find your place, give me a good amen. Amen. <laughs> Meet me in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Alright. If you're a praying person, you better be praying for me right now. Pray for me as I preach this morning. Amen. All right. Can most of God's people say amen that they're there? Amen. amen. Right. First Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Let's read. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we do love You and we praise You, dear Lord. Lord, we come before You this morning. God, asking You to speak to us from Your Word. Lord, we need to hear from You. God, I need to hear from You this morning. Lord, as real as I've heard from You this morning, as I've prepared, Lord, and as I, as I, as I listened for You this morning, God, and I waited, Father, to hear what You had me say. Lord, I, 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 I'm humble. I'm humble, God. Lord, that you speak. Lord, when you speak, you speak clearly. You speak emphatically. And Lord, though the devil may try to drown out what you would say to me or anyone else this morning, and God, I pray that you would break through whatever barriers exist in this place this morning. And God, that people would hear from you. Lord, I pray that you'd help me preach, Lord, this morning with power. I pray you'd help me preach with liberty of speech and clarity of mind. God, I pray that your divine word would go out, Lord, that it would accomplish just as your word says exactly what it's been set out to do this morning. God, set people free in this place. Lord, break down strongholds in their life. God, just I pray that you'd get loose in this service. And Lord, that there'd be nothing else we could say but that we've been in the house of the Lord today. And Lord, I, I read in your word. Father, that if we're to spoil the strong man's house, we must first bind the strong man. So today I pray, God, that Satan would be bound. Lord, that you might reign, that you might, you might just have your way in this place. And Lord, I pray that the devil might be cast far from here. Lord, I rebuke him this morning in the name of Jesus. He has no place here. But Jesus, Lord Jesus, come and show yourself in this place. In your holy, precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9 there. In that verse, it tells you that we need to be aware, we need to be constantly looking about us because uh, there is an adversary, an enemy named the devil, and he is walking about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now let me tell you the first problem with dealing with the devil that we want to talk about. And we're, we're going to spend a few weeks here. We're going to talk a lot about the devil today, and then we're going to spend the next couple of weeks looking at how to deal with the devil. Because here's the thing. Once you get saved, listen, you are a wanted person. I hope you understand that this morning. Once you are saved, you're a wanted person. You say, oh, but Jeff, now when I was lost, I was a wanted person. I mean, I had a bullseye on me. The devil wanted to make sure that I that I, I didn't go to heaven, that I didn't get saved. Well, let me tell you something. As long as you're lost, he's got you right where he wants you. He don't need you to move. He don't need you to do anything. He said, all he needs to do is keep you right where you are so you will perish in a place called hell. Okay? understand that this morning. But once you get saved, you are a wanted person. You have a bullseye target on you. And what the devil ultimately wants, he wants you discouraged. He wants you compromised. And ultimately, he wants you dead. Friends, he doesn't want you to have joy in the Christian walk. He doesn't want you to enjoy 
enjoy Christian leaders. He doesn't want you to enjoy Christian fellowship. Some of you don't enjoy Christian fellowship. Friends, it ain't nothing but the devil trying to rule your life. Steal your joy and take away everything that God has given you through Christ Jesus. My friends, I'm here to tell you this morning that the Lord loves you and the devil hates you. And if the devil has his way with you, he'll destroy you. But you know what, friends? What alarms me even more is that people, including people who are saved, born again Christians, who will perish from this earth and die and go to a place called heaven, that friends are in denial about the work of a devil, of a, of a, of a Satan, of a Lucifer, whatever name you want to call him by through the scriptures this morning, they're in denial about what he does and what he can do to your life. Right. Right. Now we're fixing to come up here on Halloween. And, and, and oh, Halloween. You should talk about Halloween in the <laughs> Some of y'all's faces drop when we start talking about trunk or tree. Listen, friends, I want to give them something. I want to give them the greatest treat in the world. I want to give them Jesus. Yeah. I want those kids to know and their parents to know that there's a God in heaven that loves them. Contrary to what this world may tell them, contrary to what the devil may offer them, that there's a God that loves them. But listen, friends, I want you to understand something this morning. There are plenty of people sitting inside the church houses all across America, all across this world, who are in denial about a man named Satan. And I want you to understand something. The world, Satan, has helped do this because he is behind everything. He is running this program just as much as Jesus is running the program of the church and the love, mercy, and grace that comes from Jesus Christ. I want you to understand something this morning. The devil is running this world a program that seeks to tear up everything that God is doing. Amen. Woo! Amen. Woo! <laughs> Y'all just sit there. Adam told you there wasn't seat belts. You just sit there. It's okay. I'll have a spell by myself. But listen, I want you to understand we're in denial about this devil because what the devil has done, he's painted this picture of himself and it's this picture of this cloak and horns and he's mean and he's, and he's nasty. Let me tell you something. No, my friend, he's not. Right. Do you hear me this morning? He is not. One of the best representations in a play that I ever got of Satan was down at Park Avenue Baptist Church in Nashville, Tennessee. I was probably about 15 years old. They were doing uh, a play and it was all about people thought it's kind of like Heaven's Gate Hell Slaves, but not the same. Uh, and, and, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, they took a snapshot, kind of like we will through the reality house. They took a snapshot of different people's lives. They appeared before the judgment seat. God judged them either to an eternity in heaven based on their relationship with Christ or judged them to a place called hell because they refused His Son, Jesus Christ. And friends, contrary to what the devil will tell you, that is the only reason you'll wind up in hell is if you reject Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It won't be because you wasn't good enough. It won't be because God didn't want you. It'll be because, listen, my friends, you made a choice to say no to the only begotten Son of God. That'll be the only reason you perish in a place called hell. But the best representation I ever had of Satan was in that play. And he came out, and it wasn't a cloak and horns, and, and he didn't talk real big and, and nasty. You know what he did? He came out in a three piece suit. I didn't even know who he was for most of the play. Oh, but I'm Jeff, you did too. No, I was lost. Do you hear me? I, I was lost at the time I watched his play. I was, I was on my way to hell. And, and, and the devil came out and, and he would talk to people. And he would say that he would suggest things. I mean, he didn't even tell them to go do it. He just said, Have you thought about this? What about that? See, the devil, he, he's subtle. This scripture, now I ain't got this scripture up here for you. You gotta remember, God was speaking to me, boy. I, I just, I, I, when this is driving, I'm glad I wasn't my driver. <laughs> Lord God, if he'd been speaking and I'd been driving, I just had to pull over. Uh, I was sitting over here this morning and the Lord was just speaking and I was right. But listen, the devil is so... You won't even know what he's doing to you until he's already done it. But people are denial about that. They say, oh, but yeah, you just don't even know what you're talking about. Listen, why do you think that God painted the picture from the very beginning in Genesis of the serpent being more subtle than all the beasts of the field? Now listen, does anybody ever go out? How many of y'all love snakes? Oh, we got some boys. Yeah, right, AJ. We'll <laughs> <laughs> buy you one. See how you handle it. Huh? <laughs> I don't like snakes. But how many of y'all want to just go out there and just get bit by a cockpit? How many of y'all just want to go find a rattlesnake to play with? Woo! Nobody 
apologize. Why? Because they know nobody goes out looking to do that. But do people get bit by those snakes? Yeah. Usually when? When they're not paying attention? Yeah. Where they're walking? Usually when they're not aware of their surroundings? Usually when they invade the space of that snake? That snake don't, don't have to come looking for you sometimes. Sometimes you wind up in his territory and don't even know you made it there. Yeah. But that snake will get you if you get in his way. <clears throat> See, the devil, he's, he's, he's walking about, the Bible says there. He, is, he, he cannot be everywhere. I want you to understand that this morning. He's right. not God. Right. You understand that? The devil can't be everywhere. Right. You know, my, my father in law, he used to joke with me. Y'all find this one, maybe. He used to joke with me that he said, Y'all gotta quit having business meetings on the second Sunday of the month. I said, Why is that? He said, Because the devil can't be everywhere. Most people have business meetings on the first Sunday night of the month. And so, if you can't be everywhere, your business meeting won't be bad if you don't have it on a night when nobody else is having it. That's pretty good logic. But I tell you, the devil cannot be everywhere. Right. But listen, remember the devil has his angels too. Right. Because that's what hell's been prepared for. Yeah. Devil and his angels. See, the devil wants to get you to a place called hell today because that's where he knows he's going. Right. He knows his destiny. He knows where his destination is. But he cannot be everywhere. But he is constantly walking about is what the Bible says. Well, why is he constantly walking about? Why is he constantly on the move? Why is he over here and bothering them, and over here and bothering them, and over here and bothering them, and over here and bothering them? Why is he constantly moving locations and bothering different people? Because, listen, he is seeking whom he may devour. He is looking for a weak link. Did you hear that? Listen, the devil never got in a church and caused an uproar, except he got a hold of somebody who was weak. Yeah. Amen. Oh? When you take your problems in the church, every time there's problems in a church, in a church, I'm not talking about just here, I'm talking about any church that has problems. It is nothing but Satan himself. Because the Bible says a house divided cannot stand. Man. The Bible says that God and the devil cannot inhabit the same place. Yeah. I mean, in the presence of God, the devil has to go. Man. He must flee. At the name of Jesus, he must go. Now, when I think of seeking whom he may devour, I think about the picture of a vicious animal. Now, what we might be familiar with around in this area would be coyotes. Now, people know what a coyote is. Okay, good. Coyotes, hey, they like to find a weak link. Yeah. They like to find an animal out by itself. And sometimes they don't come by themselves. Sometimes they bring the whole pack to make sure they win the battle. What do you mean, Richard? Well, I think about this. Think about, you know, a little cat that's sick and not going to make it. And it's just kind of wandering around. And coyotes will jump at you. Coyotes. The devil will bring and he will bombard your life until he breaks you down. Do you hear me? Right. You wonder why you're going through so much struggle? You wonder why you're stressed? You wonder why things are falling apart when you're trying to walk for Jesus? They told me everything get better. And it did eternity say, listen, friends, but you got a target on your back. Well, Brother Jeff, I just don't know if I won't be in there. Well, let me tell you something. It's a whole lot better in it than it is out. And let me tell you something else you need to understand is that you've got a helper and you've got an advocate. Adam already said that up here this morning. You've got an advocate and father uh, through Jesus Christ. You've got uh, you've got a uh, help me and the Holy Spirit living inside of you. And friends, I can't begin to teach you today how to fight the devil, but we will. We will get through this scripture and learn about the devil and we will learn how to defeat the devil in our lives. But I want you to understand something this morning. And that is that the devil will fight you and he will bring all manner of evil against you to try to break you down. But you need to say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Mm. <coughs> 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 mm. Devil operates the same way those coyotes do. He looks for a weak link. It might be that you're not able to be in church faithfully or that you choose not to be in church faithfully. And so what he does is he begins to, to, to war against you because you've not been there getting fed. Uh, you've not been there getting from God what you need to be able to fight this battle. Oh, Brother Jeff, you don't think going to church is going to help you? I think that the 
the Bible says that you ought not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. And so much more as that day approaches with means the coming of the Lord because He knows that in this time as the devil is warring against us, as the devil is fighting us, and as the Lord is on His way back, that the devil is redoubling His efforts to deceive a lost and dying world. He's redoubling His efforts to destroy a saved church so that friends that it will not accomplish everything that God has set it out to do. You need to be in church so that you can get fed from the Word of God so that you can find out what's spiritually necessary to defeat Him. And no just staying around a couple more weeks and hearing what God says from His Word won't do it. Right. What do you mean, Brother Jeff? Well, friends, it could be that the devil has found your weakness. The devil has found your weakness. He's found mine. He's found mine. He said, oh, what is your weakness, Brother Jeff? My health. My health is my weakness. Because every time that something goes wrong with my health, my, the devil reminds me that my father died. <coughs> and he tries to get me to blame God. And I won't do it. I won't blame God. Because I had a godly father that loved me and taught me the Bible. And it took me to church. And it loved me and it loved God. And it's in heaven. Right. Hello? Right. But the devil uses that against me. He said, God's going to do the same thing for you. You're going to leave your children without a father. No, he's not. If the devil takes me, if the Lord takes me away tomorrow, and the devil is right that I that I do leave them without a father, let me tell you something. They have a heavenly father that loves them more than I can ever love. Amen. And I love them a whole lot. Amen. See, the devil, he will, he will find your weakness. He will find your weakness by chipping away at you, and he will do it from different angles. See, it's not always the same. <coughs> It's not always the same. He, he, he'll try one thing, and if that doesn't work, friends, he'll come at another angle. Right. And he'll come at another angle. And he'll come at another angle. And he'll chip, and he'll chip. It's just like taking a block of ice and, and knocking at it and trying to knock it away. He'll just keep pounding. If you let him. What do you mean? Well, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 says this. Or, 6.11. Get ready to mow the line. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil. The schemes, the scams, all the things that he tried to see. He chips at you and when that doesn't work, when that thing didn't break you down, he finds another area of your life and he attacks that area of your life. And when that don't break you down, he, he attacks another. Now, here's where we invite the devil in. When we submit to the first thing that he tried. And I don't mean that that was the first attempt at chipping away at you. He tried something and that didn't work. He tried something else and that didn't work. And so now he tries something and you buy it. And he says, uh-oh. Found it. Right there it is. That's what makes them tick. See, th think about it for me. <laughs> I want you to think. The devil can't read your thoughts. I believe you hear what you say. I right. believe if you say that loud, I believe the devil can hear you. Right. Sometimes I tell the devil how I feel about it. Open. I mean, drive down the road. I, I was just about to pull over and go to get out of the truck. I've told him several mornings to get out of my house. Hello? Man. Have you told him to go? Mm -hmm. Have you told him you don't belong at your house? Have you told him that your house, that you've declared, you've chosen to stay who you serve, and you serve the Lord, Man. and he just go put yeah. rocks down the street? <coughs> hmm? <coughs> What's your weakness? Don't say it. What's your weakness? Oh, everybody wants to think about the good things. Everybody wants to think about what they're strong at. I like to think about what I'm strong at. But I know what my weaknesses are. Oh, oh, oh. did you say weaknesses, Brother Jim? Yeah. Guess what? <laughs> Usually we got more than one. What's your weakness? Where's he got you compromised at? Where's he got you messed up at? It's getting quiet. Where'd that amen go? Praise you, brother. Think about it a minute. It's easy to think about the strong things, but what about your weakness? 
You say, Brother Jeff, I don't quite understand what you mean. Well, let me give you an example. <clears throat> For some people, and, and I'm using this just strictly as an example, okay? So if you're offended, it's because it's Bible and it hurts, okay? Right. <clears throat> For some people, sexual immorality is a problem. Before marriage, we call it premarital sex. After people are married, we call it adultery. But I want to help you understand something. Neither one of those things, premarital sex or adultery, neither one of them happen. You just wake up one day and say, I'm going to do that. Right. Do you hear me? Right. You don't get up this morning and, and for those who are married, look over at your wife and kiss her and then go out to work and say, I'm going to cheat on my wife today. I've made up my mind. Does that happen? No. Absolutely not. Oh, but Jeff, oh, but Jeff, you just don't know. I've been through that. You just don't know what it's like. Let me tell you something, friends. I know that it doesn't just happen. Well, how do you know? Because the devil begins somewhere. Maybe he planted a thought. Maybe, maybe it was for men. I'm a man. It's easy for me to relate to men. Hello? Right. Hello? Right. I'm a man. It's easy to relate to men. If men say hey, amen, it's easy to relate right. to men. If not, you're a sissy man. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's but it's easy to relate to men. What the devil do? You say, some, some pretty lady walk by. You say, oh, ain't she pretty? Now, my father-in-law taught me something. My father-in-law's been my mentor. My father-in-law said, the first looks free, the second will cost you. <laughs> you understand? It's one thing to say, well, she's a nice looking lady. It's the second thing to go. <laughs> huh? You know what happens when your wife's around? Or, or the pinch in the arm. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Do you realize that's the devil? Yeah. He distracted you. Yeah. You didn't go out there to look for that pretty woman. I, he and my father-in-law, like I said, has been my mentor. Thank goodness my, my wife did not inherit this gene. My mother-in-law is terribly bad about when we're all out somewhere of pointing them out. <laughs> <laughs> look how she's dressed. <clears throat> look what she's wearing. And, and you're sitting there at the table, you're enjoying your food, and I'll sit there. <laughs> Thank God Melissa didn't inherit that. She doesn't do that to me. You know? I, I think sometimes my mother lost testing me. She's going to sit on your <laughs> Some grandmother wearing a cardigan, sitting over there, dressed all nice, and she says, Look what she's wearing. <laughs> And it's the devil. 
And listen, friends, if we could recognize the devil, and it happens for people who, who are not married, hello? Right. Yeah. Teenagers, young adults that aren't married, they get caught in the same web. Right. Listen, you don't have to be married to do something that's sexually immoral. Right. Hello? Right. You can be not married. The Bible says that the bed's undefiled. Fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Where? Judge. <coughs> Where? Where? Judge. Now why am I telling you all this? Because friends, the devil is a liar. Right. He makes it look good. Everything will be okay. How do I know he's a liar? The Bible tells me he's a liar. John chapter 8 verse 44. I want you to look at that. We read this Wednesday night. If you were in my class, we read it Wednesday night. But it's worth repeating. It says, Ye are of your father the devil. Now he was talking to the religious people who would not listen to him, who wanted to kill him. It says, The lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. So a destroyer. And a bow not the truth, because there is no truth in him. Did you see that? There is no truth in him. Who? The devil. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. He's the father of all lies. He'll tell you no one will know. He'll tell you what could it hurt. Listen, this is what he tells lost people. Here's what he tells lost people. He tells a lost person that your sin is only natural. You're just doing what anybody else would do. Anybody in their right mind will do this because it's enjoyable. Oh, Brother Jeff, that's not what happened. What happened in the Garden of Eden? He said, if you eat of this fruit, you shall not surely die, but in the day you eat thereof, you'll be like God. Uh, like God. <laughs> like God. <laughs> You're only doing what's natural. Don't you want to be just like God? He tells people who are lost, it's okay, you're only doing what feels right. But he leaves out what the Bible says, and the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, 25, that the pleasures of sin are for a season. Seasons come and seasons go. And what sin does, friends, is it will be enjoyable when it starts. But when it is full grown, the Bible says it brings forth death. When it is full grown, it will leave you with guilt and shame and regret. Hello? Man, man. Mm. To those who are saved, his favorite lie is this. Every person sins. Some of you probably said that. I used to try to justify that in my mind. Yeah. Everybody's got sin. Everybody deals with it. I've just got to get over it. I'm always, I'm a sinner and I'm always going to be a sinner. Let me tell you something. You are a child of a king. Right. You are bought with the blood of the Lamb. Right. I, I, the highest price that could ever right. be paid was paid at Calvary so that right. you could be born again so that you didn't have to live dead and feed for the rest of your life. And friends, we don't want to live like Jesus. Right. Yeah. I'll not want sin. Listen, when I can have the glories and the riches of heaven, I'll not want the leftovers and the grub of the devil. Right. Right. Oh. <coughs> I just don't like this kind of preaching. Right? <laughs> Get saved. <laughs> it's the truth. The truth will set you free if you listen to the truth today. You won't be in bondage to what the devil sold you. He sold you something sorry, cheap, and no good. My friends, I'll stand today and admit that I'm, I'm chief among sinners. I'm like the Apostle Paul. I believe the Lord saved me just to show me we could save people. Well, I've seen it. I still see it. But I refuse to justify my sin with a lie of the devil. See, How's that a lie? Everybody does sin, Brother Jeff. Oh, well, wait a minute. I, I, I believe if you get over here and, and get in some of the Apostle Paul's reading, which if you read the New Testament, you'll have to read part of Paul before you get through it, huh? He 
It's in there somewhere. The Lord gave it to him. He wrote it down. Right. But Paul wrote these words in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. I want you to see it. I want you to see it for yourself. Now, he had just been talking about the grace of God and how great the grace of God is. And then he comes into the 6th chapter here and this is what he said. What shall we say then? We've heard all these marvelous things about grace. What shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now listen, where sin is, grace abounds. You know why? Because God loves sinners. And the grace of God is much greater than any of our sins. But Paul says, even though grace would abound, he says, God forbid. Certainly not. We shall not continue in sin that grace may abound. Certainly not. Because here's the thing he says. How shall we that are dead in sin live any longer therein? Well, what are you saying, Brother Jeff? I'm saying that if you're a child of the King, that you get out of the hole. If you're a child of the King, you don't stay in there where the devil's at. You don't stay in that muck and mire. You get yourself out. You clean yourself off and you go home to the Father. But listen, if you can dwell in sin and stay in sin, you need to check your heart, friend. Uh, are you saying I'm not saved, Brother Jim? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you better make sure of that first. Right. But the second thing I'm telling you is that there's no way you're living for God if you're staying in sin, especially if you're staying in the same sin over and over. Right. Oh, the devil gets you trapped in that. Tell you, well, you're just dealing with this one. It's just this one. Everything's okay. Listen, you know what? We don't need a vice. We don't need something that's got a grip on us. We need a God of heaven to grip our heart, not some sorry sin that will destroy our life, our witness, and, and, and our, our relationships, and destroy everything that God intends to do in our life. It's not okay. It's not natural for us to be in sin. We don't belong to the world anymore. We belong to a king. And His name is Jesus. Right. And if we've got a problem today, it's time for our hearts to get right before God. It's time to come clean. We need to pursue our Savior who spared no expense to pursue us. Now, what do you mean, Brother Jim? I'm going to wrap all this up for you here in just a moment. With John chapter 10, verse 10. I want you to look at that. John chapter 10, verse 10. It's a... It's a it's a familiar verse. I, I've quoted it many times since I've been your pastor. But the further I go, the more it means to me. It says, The thief come and not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundant. Abundant living. Abundant living. Life to the fullest. A, a, a joyful life. A life better than the world offers. A life better than the devil had promised. A life that is hid in Jesus Christ. A life that will mean something not only here, but forever. That's the life that the Lord's offering. That's the life that the Lord wants to give. Well, brother, if you just told me how bad it's going to be if I get saved and I'm going to be a wanted person, it's going to end up so much better. Uh, Brother Jim, I, I already got enough problems. I, I don't want to get up and fight every morning. Listen, you got a friend that'll walk with you. That the Bible stick, says sticks closer than a brother. You've got a, a friend that'll that'll be there and who'll fight the battle for you if you'll give the battle to him. Man. See, that's really what God's waiting on is for some of us to turn the battle over to him. Man. But what's the devil want? The devil wants to steal and kill and to destroy. For those who are lost, He wants to steal your opportunity to be saved. He wants to save you right now. Today. Right in this very room. He wants, he, he's, he's tugged at your heart before and He's tugging again, the Lord has, and, and He wants to save you. And the devil's saying, don't do that. You don't want to go there. The devil wants to steal your opportunities. He wants to kill your conviction. He wants to say, it's not real. It's what he's telling you, that's not how it is. And he wants to destroy your soul. Amen. That's what he wants for you. And that's in direct opposition to what God wants for you. And if you're here and you're saved, he wants to 
steal your joy. You said, oh, you've been robbed of your joy. Yeah. That's why you don't enjoy church. That's why you don't enjoy Christian people. That's why you don't enjoy preaching. That's why you don't enjoy the worship service. That's why you don't enjoy life. That's why you don't enjoy your family. Yeah. That's why you don't enjoy your job. That's why you don't enjoy the things of this world that the Lord has put here for our benefit, not what the devil is offering. Yeah. Do you understand that? There's some things still out there that the good, good Lord put here for us to enjoy. Right. You don't enjoy those things because the devil's robbed you. And it's time for you to go get your joy back. It's time for you to go take back what rightfully belongs to you. Oh, he stole your joy. And some of you, he's in the process or may have killed your witness. And if you let him, he will kill your witness. Right. And if you kill your witness, he'll destroy your life. Because he wants you discouraged, compromised, and he wants you hate. That's the truth. Right. That's the devil. But the Lord, he's for you. When everybody else may be against you, he's for you. Heads about and eyes are closed.